Okay, so we're going to talk about pharmacy laws, regulations, and ethics. This is going to go through all the laws you need to know, all of the regulations, and who is responsible for those regulations. So if you know that a law or something is being broken, or patient's privacy is being violated, you'll know what agencies to go to for which of those problems. So, laws provide minimal expectations that are expected. So, it outlines the absolute bare minimum that you have to do to be following the law. Um, there's two governing bodies. There's Congress and then there's state government. So, Congress is the federal government. And, obviously, state is the state government. So, there's federal regulations and laws that you have to follow. And there are state laws and regulations that you have to follow. Most of them agree, but um, when they don't and when they're written differently, both laws still have to be followed. So if you come to a situation where the two laws don't agree, you follow the more strict of the two. Um, there's two federal agencies that deal with laws. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration makes laws, make sure they're being followed. Um, they write the laws, outline what you're supposed to be doing. The DEA, or the Drug Enforcement Agency, these are actual police officers. They have badges. They will come in a pharmacy. Uh, they mostly deal with controlled substances. But they will come in your pharmacy, and they will show you their badge, and ask to come behind the counter and check your controlled substance logs. You can't deny them access. You have to let them in, and you have to let them look at whatever they're going to look at, spend as much time as they want, answer all of their questions. But um, if the DEA is involved, they are, are they are police officers, and they there's usually fines or charges associated with what they're doing. So state law, the Texas State Board of Pharmacy, is who is responsible for licensing prescribers and dispensers. So the State Board of Pharmacy licenses doctors and um, pharmacists. They have state regulations that pharmacies must follow. These regulations are different in each state. Um, I gave y'all the NABP website in the pharmacy technician lectures. That site has the lists of all 50 states, and it has all the regulations for those 50 states to make sure that you're following the laws in whatever state you're practicing in. Usually, state laws are more strict. So, for the most part, federal law is going to be kind of like an umbrella law that says, okay, everybody has to do this, this, and this. State law is going to go back in and say, okay, but here's... Here's what you have to do, and here's how we want you to do it. So their state laws are usually the more strict of the two. Um, going back to the more strict, if you are following the more strict law, you are automatically following both laws. So you want to make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing, and you have to follow both of them. So by following the more strict of the two, you're guaranteed to be following both of them and not be in, not risk being in trouble. So state has um, protocols. So will your employer. But um, these are specific guidelines for practice and what they want you to do. So there's going to be protocols for um, how to interact with patients, how to enter drugs, what to do how certain classes of medications have to be handled. Um, so how the state regulates pharmacy technicians is they hold the supervising pharmacist responsible for the technician. So obviously a pharmacist has more on the line than a technician. They've been to school. They have student loans. Um, they have extensive knowledge of how pharmacies work, how medications work in the body, 
and all of that that technicians usually do not have. So by holding the pharmacist responsible, your technicians are going to do what they need to do or they're going to get fired. That's kind of how the state looks at it, and it does work that way. If a pharmacist notices that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to lose your job. Or if a pharmacist notices that you are stealing narcotics, you're going to lose your job and they're going to press charges on you. Because you losing your certification does not compare to them losing their license. Yes, pharmacy te technicians make good money. Pharmacists make much better money. And they went to college for this. You took a course in high school. Or you just went and took a test after you read a book. Or whatever it may be. You did not go to school as long as they did. You did not put in as much money as they did. Time and effort studying. So they're not going to cover for you as a technician if you, if you are in the wrong. They're going to throw you under the bus every single time. Um... And if you are the cause of a pharmacist losing their license, it, yeah, you're not going to be high on anyone's um, list of people they want to be around. So, um, and by following protocols and following laws and regulations and doing what is required, you are in compliance. So you always want to be in compliance because that would mean that you're following the laws as they're given and you're not doing something that could be questionable or doing something that could put a patient in harm's way or harm a patient or um, cause a pharmacist to be in a situation where they have to say, hey, that's illegal, you no longer have a job, and I'm going to report you to the state board and you will lose your certification. So you want to be in compliance with all of the laws and regulations, and that's kind of what this... Um, what this whole chapter is about. It tells you the laws and it tells you what you have to do to follow those laws.